Hey everybody, welcome into the mosh pit. We are going to be playing first bite here on the channel. Um, I've had this game for, well, since it came out and have had life stuff come up and have not been recording or uploading to the channel uh, here on YouTube, but I figured, you know what? I've been missing it. Let's play first bite. This is the one that I was going to record when I had to stop and do uh, the stuff that life brought. So uh, let's try it out. It's a vampire uh, dating sim from what I remember. Uh, don't really know much about it. First bite is 18 plus for strong language, violence, potential player death, blood and gore, optional sex scenes, including consensual kink, BDSM, supernatural, emotional manipulation, other content. Stuff that basically YouTube won't let uh, me monetize. <laughs> Play discretion is advised. Sounds great. First Bite Games. Uh, basically, probably built this studio to make the game. Don't know the history of the studio, but uh, First Bite, and then they make a vampire sim. Yeah. Down and dead in drive. Hmm. Maybe turn it up just a tad. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I like this intro. Valeria. Oh, she's shadowy. None of the people you're going to get to see. Huh? Alejandro Sabes. What was that? Tlugs? Was that right? Uh, I probably read that wrong. Laurel? That Laurel here? I will remember people's names as long as it's on the screen. <laughs> Intro music. James, you did a good job. I like that. That was a, good, that was a jam. All right, uh, nothing but darkness surrounds me. I close my eyes, desperately trying to blink it away, but there's just nothingness. Yeah, there's nothing on the screen. A void. I am alone. Where am I? Am I in a coffin? What am I doing here? How did I even get here? I'm trying to move my legs. Nothing. As hard as I try to run away, my body refuses to cooperate. I try my arms next frozen before I can try anything else a light appears in the distance there's something else flickering right next to that light I can barely make it out but what little I can see is horrifying Ooh, spooky glowing red eyes bright white fangs I don't see any fangs blood dripping from sharp talons in an instant, they multiply, dancing around in the shadows. <laughs> they laugh, a cacophony of demonic giggles, and then skitter towards me at an inhuman speed. Their movement's chaotic. I'm helpless as they close in around me. An aroma of metallic sweetness infiltrates my nostrils, and I'm surrounded. Is that a vampire fart? Trapped. Then they pounce, claws tearing deep into my muscles. As they grab a hold of me, teeth sinking into my flesh. I try to scream, but no sound escapes. Part one, hunger. Is that because I've been turned? I'm hungry now. Ah! My eyes jolt open as I wake up in a cold sweat. It was a dream, just a dream. Or closer to a nightmare. Depends on how you feel about being torn apart by vampires, I guess. <laughs> my heart feels like it's about to burst out of my chest. My mind races over the lingering memory of what I saw. I quickly scan my surroundings, make sure I'm actually in my room. Yep, it's purple, stars on the ceiling. A bunch of uh, weeb stuff all over the walls. I quickly scan my surroundings to make sure I'm actually in my room and also alive. Everything is in its rightful place, and my laptop is asking me if I'd like to continue watching Death of the Dead. At this point, I should know better than to fall asleep watching horror movies, but I was lured in at the prospect of two hot characters kissing. 
and I just rested my eyes for a little too long. Oops. Some ridiculous part of my brain holds a kernel of hope that one day I'll enter a deliciously dark world of the unknown and unexplainable, but for now, I'm stuck here. Even my dreams won't let me near what I want. And now that these thoughts are once again racing through my mind, I, I know it's absolutely fruitless to try to fall back asleep, but I try nonetheless. I go through every trick in the book, breathing exercises, counting sheep, writing erotic fanfiction in my head <laughs> about Sonic and Knuckles. Ooh, Knuckles, you're the bad boy. Decidedly unhelpful. Surprise, surprise, I'm still awake, blankly staring at my ceiling. Great job, me. Nice uh, skylights, though. See the stars? I sigh, pushing the covers off my body. There's no point staying in bed. I grab my phone off my bedside table. Is that this over here? Is this a bedside table? Because there's nothing over here. Bracing myself as I check the time. 3 a.m. Once again, my body betrayed me by falling into this disgusting habitual cycle, having a nightmare. Wake up. Stay awake. Rinse. Repeat. Sounds like my nights, actually. <laughs> I get up uh, pretty damn early. My alarm is set for 4 a.m. I get up and stream. And uh, it's just my routine. And I have nightmares quite frequently that wake me up really early, and then I can't go back to sleep. So, so I, I relate. Defeated, I yawn and stretch my bones as I stand and I make my way to my bedroom mirror. I drag my fingers down my cheeks and glare at my reflection. Illuminated by dangling fairy lights. Get used to that reflection, because, uh, you know, what happens when you turn vampire. What's your first name? Um, can I change that? I can. Um, how about... Because it's gonna be a vampire. That's right, sucker! Mm. <laughs> uh, enter? There we go. Last name? How about, uh... The... Blood. Suck of the blood. <laughs> there we go. Pronouns? Uh, sure. I will say he, him. Eye color? Um, let's go with blue. <sighs> Take a deep breath. I am suck of the blood, and I'm going to have a good night. That's right, suckers. If only my therapist could see me now. A positive affirmation to start my... Wait, uh, is it is it night, uh, day, morning, uh, hmm, time between times? Normally when this disjointed sleeping pattern curses me, I, I either read my old collection of goose flesh books for the 100th time or write for my website. The singularity most interesting thing about me is that, uh, or the singularly the most interesting thing about me is that I have cradled and nurtured a cryptid blog to a nice level of internet fame. Ghostin is my main source of ser serotonin, and I started out as a tiny forum, an avenue to find and cultivate friendships. Those that love the strange and unusual as much as I do. So it's not like a ghost hunter blog or something like that. It still serves the same purpose now, but on a larger scale. Mingling still happens, and the original forums are as active as ever, but I had to get creative and produce different types of content in order to keep myself afloat in this economy. My review of Where the Werewolves goes up later today, and also need to upload How to Attract Bigfoot video. <laughs> Can I click these? No, they're just underlined. The crown jewel is Ghostin. Is all... Wait, the crown jewel of Ghostin is also overdue for an update. It's an erotica section lovingly dubbed the Cryptid Coitus Corner. <laughs> it surprised me to see it become the most popular part of the website. Oh, you think? The dirty part is the popular on the internet. Hmm, imagine that. I'll admit I'm no Bill Shakespeare, but it warms my heart to see people coming back for my wide and varied selection of supernatural erotica. Who knew that horny horror was like catnip to people all over the world and not just me? Unfortunately, I'm stuck on my latest would-be masterpiece, that all I have is the potentially questionable title, Mummy Milkers. <laughs> <laughs> It's a work in progress. Don't judge me. I wave it off. I'll figure out. Uh, I'll figure that out later and update Cryptid Coitus Corner when uh, inspiration hits. I lazily scan my room, 
trying to hit the motivation jackpot when I pause on my window. The moon is full and bright against the starless sky. An excellent setting for some ominous entertainment. Hmm. Maybe I need to get out, go for a walk, see what early morning Portland offers me. Oh, in Portland, huh? There's enough weirdness happening during the day in this city, so I'm sure something's bled over into the twilight hours. You can, you can guarantee it. Uh, last year we had uh, in the in the early hours one of the food trucks downtown blow up. It had like a gas leak or something. So, yeah, wild shit happens at night in Portland. With my mind made up, I mosey over to my closet. What does one wear for watching hours for a witching hour stroll? Uh, let's see, all black? No, that's dangerous. You might get hit by a car. Uh, comfort is key. Dress to the nines. Let's just go with comfort. It's the middle of the night. I don't need fashion. But I demand comfort. Always. PJ pants is life. I find the comfiest pants are the biggest and the biggest sweatshirt I own and slide into them. Ah, bliss. I pose in front of the mirror, blowing a kiss to the mirror. Sucker. Looking good. I'm a little abuzz with excitement as I gather my bearings. The most radical thing I've done lately is quit my gray-toned office job and pick up shifts at a local coffee shop to supplement the income from my website. It's comforting knowing that there are others like me who have this undeniable attraction to the things that go bump in the night, despite the monotony of my day-to-day. It's easier to exist when you blend in and squirrel away any untoward interest. It avoids awkward conversations and no one's caught on to my deep dark secrets yet. There was a time where I felt my desires for the supernatural were something to be ashamed of. And well, maybe they are in polite society, but after I spent too many brain-rotting hours in an office cubicle, I decided I would lean into the delusion to bring some color back into my life. Most people don't see the value in that sort of thing, and that's fine, but I can't help it. Something about the occult excites me more than anything else. It's always been that way. I gave up trying to fight it a long time ago. I shake the thoughts from my head. It's no use thinking about that now. I have some inspiration to look for. I grab my phone, my wallet, my house keys from my desk and give my room a once over, making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Then with a final flash of some finger guns, <laughs> <laughs> my reflection on the mirror. How do they know me? This, game, this, are you, are you watching me and making this? I like the finger guns. I'm out. It isn't long until I find myself standing outside the house. Sixty-nine, sixty-nine, dead end drive. Heh, <laughs> nice. It's creepy and old, and no one actually knows who owns it. And right now it's luring me in. Normally I pass by on my walk to the coffee shop and during the day I give it no more than a fleeting thought. Maybe it's the desperation of a crumb of inspiration, but tonight I'm intrigued. For years I thought it was totally abandoned. The windows all covered with what looked like scraps of newspaper, but what gives me pause is the front yard. It's, it's too well kept. Those bushes don't tend to themselves. That is what she said. Like every historic neighborhood, there's always that one house that has particularly bad reputation. This gothic beauty is it. I have heard all the stories, I count them on my fingers. Witches who eat children, an axe murderer who slaughtered their whole family, a pack of feral stray cats overthrowing the previous owner, lycanthropes hideout, and my personal favorite, vampires. I always thought it was a joke to scare away kids, stop them from playing on their lawn, but... Hmm. If only it were true. I find myself st just standing here staring, tempted by the house and what might linger inside. Which isn't the smartest move. In October. In the Pacific Northwest. Being cold. It's dark, I'm cold, it's also definitely about to rain. I should go in. The words fall out of my mouth without thought, just pure impulse, succumbing to the mystery tugging at my curiosity. I shrug to myself and look around. No one's here to witness my petty crime of breaking and entering. With my journalistic integrity intact, I will myself to stroll up to the house. The porch groans loudly in protest as I step on it, <laughs> and my hand reaches for the front door. Oh, there's... <laughs> they added a squeak. 
<laughs> nice. Nice. I apply gentle pressure to the door, and the door just swings open with a deliciously spooky, decidedly terrifying creaky. That's not what I expected. Was it just left ajar like that? Damn. I was very prepared to use lockpicking skills I picked up from all the video games I played. <laughs> yeah, just stick it in and turn if you feel it. Then adjust your mouse and then turn again. Which totally would have worked. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, we are, all us gamers are lockpicking experts. As the door swings open, a slight breeze flows from inside. Like someone forgot to close the fridge and let out the cold. I shiver against it. <laughs> and then finally I hesitate. Should I really be adding trespasser to my resume? Am I actually doing this? On second thought, <laughs> that's not. Uh, yeah, we're going in. Come on. Yes, don't be a coward. Oh, I got an achievement. Breaking and entering. What would my therapist say? She told me it would be a good idea for me to say yes to more things in my life. This is most certainly what she was talking about. Oh yeah, totally. She was like, break and enter to the creepy house down the street. 6969 Dead End Boulevard. You know you want to get down there. That's You got to adventure. Listen, sucker. You go into this house, you do it right now. Think of the possibilities. And if there are no corporeal beings, corporeal Hopefully there will be a hot ghost that won't make me want to shit my pants. <laughs> I push the door open a little more and squeeze inside. It's now or never. Once I get inside the house, my teeth start chattering. It's cold, like really fucking cold. I'm, I got a sweatshirt on. Come on now. Someone forgot heating exists. I think I'm in a small foyer. But it's hard to tell because without the soft glow of the moon and outside, I can barely see my hand in front of my face. I pull out my phone, turn on the flashlight, and inspect my surroundings. As I shine my light around the room, I see this place appears to be lost in time. Nothing seems to have changed since at least the 1800s. Not the furniture, the wallpaper, or the smell. I inhale deeply, hmm, okay, and catch a scent of something pungent, putrescine, hidden deep within the normal old house musk. Unpleasant as it is, it's an aroma that intrigues the rest of my senses, beckoning me to find the rest of the secrets packed within these walls. Probably a dead cat. Maybe a mouse or a possum. At the end of the hall, I see a light sneaking through the crack of a half-open door. Whoever's here, if anyone at all, must be in there. I hold my breath as I listen intently for clues, and sure enough, there are signs of life I craved. I hear what sounds like muffled conversations and then a very clear fuck you uh not what i expected <laughs> i raise an eyebrow now this is something worth investigating as i take another step the floorboard creak loudly under my feet shit i pause silent as a grave as still as a statue i prayed those muffled voices didn't hear me there's a tense moment before the voices continue and i release the breath i was holding Okay, I pass the stealth check. Maybe. Continuing to sneak along the dark corridor, I creep closer and closer to the illuminated room. Then I'm right outside the cracked door with my back against the wall. Now that I'm closer, I can hear them more clearly. Three. Three distinct, distinctly different dulcet tones echo into the hallway. You smell that. Everything goes deathly silent. Then... It smells like human in here. Uh-oh. Mm, Uh-oh. Uh -oh. They're smelling the human. That's me. I freeze instantly. There it is again. <gasps> I better stop farting. I keep telling you it's your dirty cups piled in the sink. You're just as shit at doing dishes as you are playing cards. <laughs> at least when he stuck the cards, there's a chance he'll have to take his clothes off. Oh, dang. They're playing strip poker up in here. Every day, the cups keep piling up and not a nipple in sight. First of all, I'm good at everything. A warrior like me just can't waste his time on trivial things like cards and dishes. <laughs> Warriors don't do dishes. Gotta save my huge brain and muscles for more important things. Second, 
I hear the sound of someone inhaling deeply. My nose never lies. I smell human. It smells human, huh? That's me. The speaker's words hit me like a thunderbolt. What had I been thinking? Skulking about in the hallway and eavesdropping on whoever lives here. Could be a troop of axe murderers for all I know. Have we already forgotten the time your nose led us straight into that werewolf house party? Um... Somehow, despite the growing panic in my chest, the phrase werewolf's, <laughs> werewolf house party makes me snort. <laughs> I cover my mouth with my hand immediately, as though it might somehow take it back. But it's too late. Well, 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 we might have company after all. Go on. Show yourself. Mm. I can't describe the feeling, but it's like I'm being compelled to step from the darkness and into the light. They're using the voice. You're using voice on me. My feet propel me forward of their own accord, carrying me around the corner as I resign myself to the fact that I've been caught. What I see when I enter the room jolts me right out of my numbness into a state of shock. Uncontrollably, my heart skips a beat. The three voices that I heard are matched by three equally and as mesmerizing faces. They're so beautiful it almost hurts to look at them. And by the look of their slightly perturbed and yet also slightly intrigued expressions, I've clearly interrupted something. So they're playing cards, it looks like. Using my big galaxy brain, I survey the situation and decide my next move. There's a mess of playing cards, glasses of red wine strewn on the table in front of them. The way they're holding their cards reminds me of an old spaghetti western. Right before there's a shootout at the saloon. You sure that's uh, wine? Because, uh... <laughs> just because it's red... The three of them stare at me in a way that makes me feel like I'm ham, ready for carving. None of them speak. They just evaluate me with their bizarre hunger in their gazes. I should say something to shatter this long, incredibly awkward pause. <laughs> Howdy. Uh, I know this looks bad, but... Listen, I know this looks bad, but... The words are barely out of my mouth before they leap towards me in an inhuman speed, knocking me onto my back and pushing me down against the carpet. Is this their house here? I got a cat uh, portrait up on the wall. A little vampire plush down here in the corner. Some uh, geodes. Hmm. Some kind of uh, figurine from something up here. The breath leaves my lungs, and my hands burn as bare skin and textile collide. See? I fucking told you I smelled human. Never doubt me again. The music's uh, getting a little loud there. No treat for you just for getting it right, Ilias. Assuming we all want to call Dibs, should we rock, paper, scissors for him? Dibs? Really, Laurel? Can't we just share? We haven't done that in a while. Um, let's drop the music down a, a tad there. <laughs> no, Valeria. As the oldest, smartest, and hottest, the human is mine by right. Hmm. I feel like a piece of furniture out for auction at a swap meet. Am I into that? <laughs> I'm completely mesmerized by every hand movement, every turn of their lips, every glance in my direction as they bicker. My heart races and I can feel myself getting unnaturally hot, despite the freezing temperature of the house. Don't be greedy, Illy. Think of all the fun we could have. Mm -hmm. That's all it is for you. Fun. You two enjoy those prepackaged little blood bags, but a hunter like me needs to feed. Mm. My fangs haven't pierced flesh in so long. The biggest one has me pinned to the floor, but despite their threatening words, they don't exactly seem intent on killing me right this second. Even lying prone on the ground, the first thing I notice is their teeth, or rather, deadly points of their canines. Their skin doesn't have the same plumpness or glow as mine has, almost like their capillaries forgot how to refill with blood. And the mirror behind them has no reflections. <gasps> no, this can't be happening. Can it? There's no way they're actually vampires. The word crashes out and they turn to me, hungry, unforgiving, 
feral. The one they call Valeria grabs a hold of my chin with a delicate hand, but there's nothing delicate about the way she holds me. Looks like we have a fan on our hands. Uh oh. Mmm, it looks like we do. Her dark brows pinched when she leans closer, her head tilted like she's sizing me up. You interrupted us, kitten. And Ilias here was just about to take his shirt off. Hmm. Taking your shirt off is for losers. <laughs> and I was clearly winning. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Winning? I'm afraid. Laurel, let him dream. I don't have to dream about winning. Winning is all I do. Look at these muscles. My face? These cards? <laughs> this guy is so full of himself. The trio continue to bicker amongst themselves, and I just lie there, watching. Vampires are just myths, monsters made up by confused historians, and then embellished by storytellers seeking to make us feel something. There has to be a simple explanation for these three, but now is not the time to get myself worked up in my own little fantasies. It's probably just some sort of kinky vampire LARP event, cosplayers who lift or something. And I'm... <laughs> cosplayers who lift? And I'm usually so on top of these gatherings. The costuming, the props are serious. Movie fan, movie magic fangs, even red wine in their glasses looks like real blood. And it wouldn't surprise me if they rented out this house for their own pleasure. There's no way you guys are real vampires. Who are you? Deadly silence fills the space between us as I graciously, oh, gracelessly interpret their quarreling. Valeria hands get tighter on my chin. Ilias' body feels heavier against me. Who are we? You don't think we're real? I don't give a shit what he thinks. He'll know we're real enough when his blood is sliding down our throats. Wow. Hmm. Too much talking. Not enough killing. Hmm. Uh-oh. Ilias lunges for me. The speed that my eyes can hardly register and I'm in such a broken state of shock that I say the first thing that comes into my head. Parlay! They all pause immediately, going still as statues as they look at me with a distinct mix of disgust and confusion. Parlay? Do we look like fucking pirates to you? <laughs> I mean, this one kind of does here. With it could be, you know, could be a pirate, you know, the right circumstance. You are what you eat, I suppose. Yo ho ho. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, uh. Is there like a vampire version of parlay that you would have to let me explain myself before you kill me? That green shit they put on your food to make it look nice? <laughs> parlay, not parsley. It's some bullshit the human picked up from the movies. You know, parlay. <laughs> Clearly, Ilias does not know. Besides, it's bold of you to assume we have anything to talk to you about, human. Hmm. He could surprise you, Val. It's weird that the um, voice acting is only on parts of the lines. I mean, I've seen that before, but usually it's like the first one and then you have to read the rest. But this one, it's kind of a mix all over the place. You know, I never thought I'd be reminiscing about all the sailors I've eaten when I first sensed him quivering around the corner. Honestly, Laurel, who hasn't eaten a ship full of sailors? <laughs> I mean, you have to if you're making the trip across uh, the ocean at night, you get hungry. Oh, now you've got me thinking about that time in Central Bay. Hmm. She gives my head an idle little shake, her fingers digging into my cheeks, making my mouth as she stares wistfully into the distance. Oh, pristine beaches, expensive wines, obnoxious tourists no one will miss. As they once again continue to talk as if I'm not here, my gaze flits between their gorgeous, terrifying faces, desperate to find something I can use. All those years of memorizing books and movies and useless video games and cryptid lore has prepared me for this moment. I rack my brain for what little information I've managed to learn about these three thus far. The biggest one, Ilias, is apparently the oldest and seems to believe he's the best of the three. Of them in every way. He's probably susceptible to flattery. Valeria, the most petite of the trio, seems to have a penchant for luxury if the glazed look on her eye when she mentioned Saint Tr Saint Tropez is anything to go by. And finally, Laurel, the hardest red... Parsed read of the three gives me a distinct impression that they might be open to being entertained. I won't have much time 
to try whatever it is I'm going to do. So I'd better choose a vampire fast and just go for it. Oh man, this might be a good place to stop. This might be a good place to stop and save. Uh, I'll figure out whether or not we want to flatter Ilias. Ask Valerie about Saint Tropez. Valeria, there it is. Uh, offer to keep Laurel entertained. Hmm. I guess we'll find out in the next episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you would pick out of these three. And uh, I will see you in the next video.